Alright guys, I'm bringing you a video today with a player build. I've been playing defense in ESHL and NHL 15. I want to bring you guys my build because I think it is the best player build that you can use as a defenseman on NHL 15, especially in 6v6. I'm going to show you my leaderboard rank right now. I'm 7th for defenseman. Points aren't really something you should strive for while you're playing defense, but at least shows you that I am playing games and I'm at least being somewhat effective at what I'm trying to do since I have a good plus minus and my club's doing pretty well as well. So I'm going to get right into the build. I'll show you the size and weight and all that stuff afterwards. But first, let's get into the attributes. So starting off, I'm using an offensive defenseman, which you might think that's a little weird. You're playing defense. Why do you want to contribute to the offense? Well, it's less about contributing to the offense and it's more about using that deking attribute and using that puck control attribute to avoid four checkers. So normally when people are four checking, you need to be able to move your stick out of the way especially if you're not going to move the puck with a one touch after receiving it you want to be able to move your stick out of the way so you're not getting four checked poke checked and all that so that's why i use deking and puck control as high as i do using them right at 90 right now then passing at 87 obviously you want to be able to make good breakout passes and that goes along with the deking and puck control so that's just what you want to do in my opinion when you're playing defense obviously if you want to move the puck more quickly or don't want to maybe take as much time with the puck you can get away with lower attributes than that or maybe using a two-way or defensive d but for what I'm trying to do, I definitely need that deking and puck control attribute at that level. Then a little bit on slap shot because you do want to be able to contribute scoring-wise in the offensive zone. I think every defenseman wants to contribute that way. And I'm glad I get to do that in my team. And I think most people do get to do that when they're playing on an organized team. So now moving on to the defensive attributes. Aggressiveness I have maxed out. I think that's pretty important when you're trying to hit. Injuries in this game are crazy and I think aggressiveness helps you injure people. And obviously people think, well, that's not that important, but really, it can change a game if you injure one of the other team's best players, so I think it's worth having. Same with body checking. I have it at 75, which isn't that high, but considering how much it costs for an offensive D-man, that is about as high as I'd be willing to go without adding a boost to it. So I think it's a pretty good level. I'm able to hit really well, even with a smaller player. And moving on to D-Aware, I've got 85 D-Aware, which I think is a decent level. Obviously, you'd think eventually you want to max that out, but at Legend 1, you got not many points to work with and it really isn't that helpful I think with hand eye and D aware combined you pick off more passes but I really don't think that extra 5 D aware will help me too much so I'm leaving it where it is for now and maybe eventually I will max that out and then stick check at 88 with a plus 12 on it obviously when you're playing defense you got to be able to poke check and stick lift so it's really important to have those athleticism 90 90 90 on skating you have to acceleration agility and speed when you're playing defense are huge you got to be able to stay in front of the people that are trying to come at you with different deeks and stuff and you obviously want to be able to join the attack when you can as well so you got to be able to skate endurance at 88 that's hit or miss with some people for me i join the attack sometimes so i'm skating up ice full speed and then i got to skate back full speed so i need to have that maxed out endurance so i don't run out of energy at the end of periods then i got 75 balance and strength which i mean decent i don't think it's huge strength helps with hitting a little bit and balance obviously helps to keep the puck when you have the puck if you're trying to get hit from behind or something it also helps when you're hitting someone that you don't fall down so it is kind of important but not hugely important then finish out with some points on durability because like i said injuries are crazy in this game you want to put some points on durability hopefully that'll help you not get injured but really i don't even know if it does so i'm going to show you the boosts obviously i've been talking about them already top category the stick category we got Stick checking and slap shot power, nothing too crazy. Then the middle two categories, which I believe are helmet and skate, is just the six boosts that I have on the skating, sevens on speed, agility, and excel, and then fives on speed, agility, and excel. Then in the bottom glove boost, we got deking, puck control, and strength. Again, nothing too crazy. I use a lot of boosts on athleticism, as you can see, with strength and all the skating, because I think athleticism is really important in this game. A lot of people that are at the higher levels really do max out those athleticism attributes by using as many boosts as they can on them. Eventually I might use plus 7 and plus 5 strength in that bottom category if I have enough points for offense because I think, like I said, it is important to have those athleticism attributes high because at the highest level that's what people like to do. Then moving on to my size and weight and stick and all that nonsense in the creation zone or edit pro, we have a low blade stick. I think it's a little bit important. I don't know how important helps you keep the puck on the ice when you're shooting for rebounds and also keeps it down when you're shooting one-timers which I mean you might as well use the stick that makes the most sense for defense and then 13 inch skates because you have gotta be able to keep up with people 11 inch skates might be something you want to try out if you're having trouble controlling your guy but I think the high-end speed to back check when you're 
find yourself too far up ice or to keep up with the play is definitely important. I play at 6 foot 182. I think it's a good size. You can still hit in this game. Honestly, I think you could hit with a 5'9 player. I really don't think that's an issue because hitting is crazy in this game. But 6 foot I think is a good balance between being able to move and being able to have a long reach with your stick. If you want to try a little bit bigger, 6'2", 190 would be my recommendation. And if you want to try a little bit smaller, I wouldn't go much smaller than 5'10", just because you don't have that reach with your stick that really does help out. So that's all I got for today, guys. I hope this player build does help you out if you play defense in the EASHL. I think this build will help out most people. If you're having trouble with it, definitely test out some other stuff. But I honestly think this is a good build, especially for 6v6. So thank you guys for watching. Please drop a like if this helped you out. I'll talk to you guys later.